Welcome back to Candy's Classic Game Shrine, everyone. Today, I am making a video that I have been hoping I would be able to make for years. And I am just so happy that I can make it at all. So, those of you that follow me on various social medias will have seen that I ordered doors for my Sharp NES TV, which is behind the camera. Um, wanting reproduction doors for that TV is something that me and a bunch of others in the very small community of TV owners wanted. Now, I originally had started working with somebody that I knew to create the doors, and we had already had one test fit done on the game door, which is this that I'm holding here. However, that person went MIA and took all of the files that I had with them. So that project was unfortunately canceled and put on the back burner. Lo and behold, I found out recently through one of the Seattle Retro Gamer Group members that somebody did actually go ahead and complete the project that I had started and made reproduction doors for not only the game door, but we also call it the sharp door here, or it goes like this actually. Now I'm going to grab a couple of different things that are 3D printed and show you how good the quality of the doors are versus some of the older prints from older model 3D printers. Um, because at a distance, you can't really tell that that's 3D printed. And the detail on the game on the door is fantastic. It is pretty much identical to the real door. Another thing that I'd like to add about the doors themselves, um, not only did the person, his name is Thomas, by the way, Thomas B, who is the man that is in charge of printing these, uh, he also went through the trouble of even including the little latch on the doors necessary to keep them closed. He'll even have the clicky sound when they are in place, which absolutely fabulous attention to detail. Absolutely fabulous. Um, the plastic is really rigid and sturdy, like, I'm not going to smash it, but that's not going anywhere. Uh, if I remember correctly, I think this took 15 hours to print, and then this one was a little bit, lo uh, a little bit less time to print. Installing them is super easy, uh, especially this door. This is probably the easiest door you're going to install on the TV. This one, you have to pull your TV out a little bit so that you can get the, I guess, the, the male and female parts to it to go into the sockets that they need to because otherwise it'll be covered by whatever surface you have your TV laying on. So I recommend either being super careful so you don't put extra stress on the four feet of the TV if you still have all four um, or just to minimize risk of dropping it. So be careful when you're installing the, uh, the door that's specifically for the game door or the game system. Let's see, what else? The only thing that is missing on this door is there originally was a sharp emblem or logo in the corner of the door. I'm probably gonna try and track one down so I can just glue it on here and make it look even more legit. Uh, I recently purchased an original real Sharp NES TV controller because mine has been lost to time. And I'm hoping that my father can find the remote for the television, which I'm almost certain is still back in Pennsylvania. So without further ado and without much more yapping, let's show you how these bad boys look on the TV and how you put them on. Now here we have our TV. It's definitely seen better days, but you know what? We're in the process of making her look pretty again because everybody deserves to go to the ball. So let's start with the sharp door since like I said before, that's the easier one. Your door is going to want to go on with this ridge here on the bottom and see if you guys can actually see that. Okay. Yes. So I recommend just going with this side first with the peg hole and then lining up the bottom with this little piece here. Let's see if I can get that to zoom in. Okay, 
So this is the other spot that you're gonna need to push it in to fasten it. Just give it, well, let's not push your TV off the thing, but there we go. You'll hear a click. And you'll hear the click when you fasten the door shut. Beautiful. Now, like I was saying for the game door, you wanna be more careful. In this case, let me zoom back out again. You're gonna to wanna to shift it a little bit towards the front so that your first two legs are kinda of off the surface your TV is resting on. And then again, you're gonna to wanna to start with this side here with the smaller peg and get all the way under here. Or actually no, I lied. This time you're going to wanna to start with the larger one on the left side here. There we go. And then for this one, you just push it in. And there we are. We just slide this back on here so it's safe. And there we have it. There is a slight color difference, but honestly, considering this thing is about 30, 31 years old, I am not expecting it to look as shiny as the brand new 3D printed doors. However, I would like to try and restore the plastic a little bit on this. I'm just not entirely sure what would be a safe product to use. Um, aside from that, uh, here is the after, er, here's the reproduction controller that I had made for the TV. I'll be getting a real one, hopefully in the next couple of weeks. You can tell this is a fake one. If you look close, you'll see uh, lines from the excess paint, a little bit of drip on the back, I think. But I just wanted it to look nice. I really don't care if it's perfect or not. And especially now that I have the real controller, I'm even happier. Eventually, I'll be getting these fixed. I have one of the buttons, so I'll probably use that button to have another one 3D printed, and then I will fasten them and hopefully install a blinking light when. It's going to be a very busy year for this TV but I'm happy for it. Now, let's discuss a little bit more about these doors. So like I mentioned before in the video, uh, 3D printing has come a very long way in the last six or seven years even. I'm gonna show you what 3D printing looked like about six, seven years ago. What we see here with the doors is very fine. It almost looks like one solid piece, almost looks injection molded if you're looking at it at a good enough distance. Honestly, that good enough distance is about a foot or two. It's not even that far. Whereas this was an item that was given to me from someone on the Virtual Boy forum. This is a clip for the Virtual Boy stand. It breaks pretty often. And this is a very early print from years ago. Now you can see every line of filament pretty much as it goes over one another. Let's see if I can get this to uh, focus. There we go. This is what an early, early print would look like. Very obvious that it's not molded or anything like that. Now, something that came out a little bit later is this Virtual Boy Universal I guess, holder for a camera tripod. Um, again, this is a little bit more recent than the last piece, but you can still see every line of filament on the side here. You can see the lines of filament pretty well on this end and on the front. Um, another more recent 3D printing one. It's kind of hard to see on this because it's glow in the dark, but this is also a 3D printed item. Let's see if I can get it to uh, focus a little bit. You can see the imperfections in the lines of the filament on the bottle, especially here. But that's another 3D printing example. And last but not least is this 3D printing example. Now again, this is the most recent thing outside of these doors that I've had printed. And this came from a 
came from a pretty uh, expensive printer, but you can still see lines of filament, but they are much better than the other ones. The bottom will always be a little tricky because it's where it was peeled off of the mat where it originally started printing, but you can see the quality change in the years. And then to go to these doors, let me zoom in so you can see the actual filaments. It's kind of hard to see because of how nice this is. It's a little easier to see on the game door itself. Basically, if you took your nail and rubbed it against, you would feel the different texture from the filament, but it's really hard to tell unless you really look. The brilliant mind behind all of this is Thomas Bosch. I hope I'm pronouncing your last name correctly. His online presence is Infinite Craftsman on various social media sites and he specializes in doing things that he's never done before and these doors were really no exception. <clears throat> he spent over two years learning CAD and pretty much undertook what he considers the biggest challenge to date that he's had as far as creating things in the maker world. Without the help of some other people, this project wouldn't have happened. Um, one of the people that was involved is Tim R. Tim Redberg, I believe his last name is. Um, he's also a Sharp TV community member, and he shipped his original doors to Thomas so that Thomas can then use a program called Fusion 360 and then make the model of the doors. However, when he was modeling the doors, he realized that the face of the game door was going to be a big issue. The face of the game door was not at a clean 90 degrees, but instead at a 95 degree angle. And on top of that, there is a slightly curved surface on the front of the door. So that makes things even more complicated if you are concerned about getting a perfect and flush fit. So. When he ran into this issue, he contacted somebody in the maker community by the name of AJ Huff. AJ is somebody who makes tons of different awesome things in the maker community and professionally works with CAD. So he was definitely the person to be speaking to regarding this. <clears throat> this entire project involved taking a bunch of risks whether it was investing in a new printer, which Thomas did, because the printer he had at hand was too small to print the size of the doors that they actually are. And he never took pre-orders to see who would want these doors and kind of kept it a secret until he was ready to go. And luckily, the people in the Sharp TV community jumped at the chance to have these doors and it's paid off great for him and everybody that has received his doors is extremely happy with the product, myself included. So that was a little bit of the backstory on how these doors were made, the little bit of struggles that were bumped into and how they were overcome. I hope you guys appreciated this video. It's been years in the making that I've been wanting to do this, that I've been wanting somebody, whether it was me or someone else, to complete the project of making these reproduction doors. And I can't thank Thomas enough for his hard work, his money, and just his time. So with that said, everyone, thank you for watching. And until next time, take care.